Hello everybody, welcome to another daily dose of gaming news and all that good stuff and as always I also publish on Rumble and on Patreon for extra support. Any kind of updates usually I go out on Twitter X platform and I will see if I can manage to get around and publish uh, a new episode of Midnight Suns. Uh, so uh, play, co uh, play co close attention yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, later on. Uh, I also have the 4K and 1080p complete gameplay series here, 1080p the older ones, 4K the most recent ones uh, around uh, one year or so uh, until now. Um, yeah, I, I got, uh, I think I did uh, just a correction here uh, regarding Muscle Hunter's beta uh, phase. Uh, I thought it was yesterday, uh, again I forgot this month uh, at uh, 31 days uh, or I mixed up the days there. Um, yeah, it started at my time zone at around 8 o'clock in the morning, but uh, yeah, I, I will see if I can manage to stream, I will stream it, uh, or else I'm going to, when I have the time, I'm going to at least play, uh, probably not record, I'm not sure yet, uh, but I will try to give it a go, uh, if I have any time during this uh, beta test stuff there. Um, and I, I will probably give my, my feedback uh, regardless if I record or, or stream or something like that. But yeah, if, if I stream, it's going to be very... Uh, uh, I, I, I cannot co uh, commit to a, a schedule there. Uh, but yeah, basically that's uh, the update from yesterday's. Um, so let's go to the news. Uh, interesting uh, things coming from Samsung. Supposedly they are preparing a 400 layer VNAND, uh, supposedly using a vertical bonding bonding for higher storage capacity this is good um, mainly because uh, of the NVMEs and the two and a half inch uh, SSDs there uh, hopefully this kind of technology will improve uh, at least from my part uh, storage capacity and re uh, re uh, sorry Jesus re uh, reliability um, for uh, this kind of storage solutions uh, I, I still think like large storage solutions, like for example a NAS or something like that, or like a homebrew kind of server stuff for you to, to get all uh, all the things that you need to storage. Uh, uh, I think still uh, spin drives or uh, HDDs are still the best uh, in terms of re reliability uh, and again capa storage capacity. Um, but yeah. Uh, uh, hopefully the, we will see something coming out of Samsung. Again, this is uh, this 400 layer VNAND. Um, it's going to be applied in the TEF generation of this technology, which will come out supposedly around 2026. Uh, so we are still a little bit far off there, uh, but hopefully uh, we will see the competition trying to get around and uh, if not going to use the same kind of things that usually Samsung uses, uh, at least a, a competitive uh, way of going about it and, and achieve the same result in terms of uh, reliability and storage capacity there. Because in terms of performance, um, again, if you have, uh, I think, two terabyte storage drive NVMe for, for uh, the system and uh, install some games there, I think it's more well enough, at least for the time being, uh, in terms of capacity storage. Uh, my concern is if you have like bigger files that you need to work with or uh, if you want to put everything that you own like images, some homemade movies and, and, and work stuff that you might have, uh, I, I think uh, we need better solutions than to put everything like NVMEs, uh, it's too expensive also uh, and I think this can start bringing uh, also the prices of this type of storage a little bit lower. Uh, uh, the faster that they improve on uh, this kind of technologies for uh, storage uh, being an NVMe or S normal SSDs to and a half inch drives there. Um, but yeah, Samsung is on the top there, at least memory wise there, they're usually on, on even for um, the, sorry, the GDDR7 modules that they bring, they usually are the top of the game. The only thing that they are uh, struggling a little bit is on uh, the chips uh, the chips for the cell phones, so the, the CPU stuff there is where they struggle a little bit in terms of competition with Qualcomm and all that, st all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, interesting to see that they are uh, going to work uh, at least for the short period working for this 400 layer VNAND. 
again, I'm assuming uh, we will see uh, a little bit of increase in storage capacities. Uh, and they are aiming up somewhere, I don't know when, to 1,000 layers in the future. Uh, I will assume it's something for 2030, maybe, um, because they are jumping around uh, around 20 to 30 percent usually from um, each generation of this technology, the VNAND one. Um, again, in the article here, they're going about a little bit here on uh, like the <laughs> the specificities of how this technology works. It's kind of again. It's too complicated for me. Uh, I can understand what they're trying to achieve here, but I cannot visualize what it is. Uh, but yeah, they are trying different ways of going about it. So to improve all uh, of this in the end result of the storage capacity and have more reliable um, uh, storage uh, units. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll see uh, something um, from the from the um, competition. Um, which I think Kyoxa is going about here. Uh, Kyoxa and Western Digitals, they, they use another kind of technology there for, uh, they call it bonding, stacking or stacking bonding, something like that. But yeah, uh, something that I uh, thought it would be interesting to check out. Uh, we got, uh, I don't know, I never heard of this uh, CWA, um, Communications Workers of America. Again, um, this is uh, commenting after the Firewalk Studio, so the Concord uh, uh, Developer Studio shut down. Um, I, I, I don't know what they're trying to aim for. It seems, uh, to the, the way they went about it, it seems that they are a little bit uh, chills for the competition of Sony or PlayStation in this case, which doesn't make very logical sense unless I'm missing something here. Uh, again, this comes up with the Sony announced the closure of two PlayStation Studios, so basically Firewalk Studios and uh, and Neo Koi, uh, which the, basically they seemingly were attempting to bring uh, uh, Sony's IPs to mobile gaming. Um, and this now, these communications workers of America are accusing Sony of furthering its gaming monopoly with the layoffs. Uh, does it make a lot of sense here or logic? Uh, if you start closing, <clears throat> if you start closing studios left and right, uh, that makes an indication to the competition that you are not able to compete on the on the market itself. So you lose a little bit of that uh, leverage or possible leverage there. So it does make a lot of sense here. Um, on the on the statements, they say these decisions uh, again to a certain degree. It's a you you pick a little bit of the truth here, and then you trying to pass your message. <laughs> Lack of a better way of referencing this. These decisions by highly insulated video game CEOs, which uh, it's not video game, it's the CEOs itself, are creating perilous working conditions for video game workers by eliminating their job stability again. Uh, gaming industry was never a, a very stable job to begin with, since I remember playing games. It's one of those things that uh, it's always referenced, not the most stable job. Uh, it's almost like a project to project um, thing that uh, where most of the developers, um, in terms of the working conditions, is kind of a project to project thing. Again, if the project goes well, they might uh, be able to be offered uh, something to work on a sequel or a similar project inside the same company or the same studio. Uh, usually if uh, the game doesn't go uh, go very well in terms of financially, of course, they, they might be moved around or uh, be basically laid off because they, they usually they were working on that project only. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I, and again, I, I don't know why they, they uh, this is something that it, everybody knows that stability, job stability in the gaming industry. We were seeing, I covered this also in some studios in Europe, in France specifically. I think it was uh, Steel Rising uh, Gaming Studios, something like that. They had uh, some issues with the, um, the union there. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it, it's one of those markets, uh, job markets that they are not very stable to begin with, so uh, it's one of those things that I really don't understand that much. Uh, the fact that they are uh, furthering this kind of narrative, like of better terms. Um, and continuing with their own statements, this is part of the statements there. Uh, Sony's decision to resolve studios outside their walled garden of PlayStation exclusive content. Again, 
the, the, the Sony bought, I don't understand, because Sony bought the studio itself in its entirety. Uh, so I don't understand the uh, PlayStation exclusive content. Um, I, I really don't understand because this is a, a was a first party studio. Um, it, it was a multiplayer game by itself, so it, it was exclusive to a certain degree from for PlayStation and PC platforms. Uh, so I really don't understand this kind of phrasing here. Uh, rather than making games that have to compete in the highly diverse and competitive mobile gaming game market should be a cautionary warn warning sign of Sony's interest in furthering his monopoly position in the video game industry. Again, this doesn't make any sense. I, I don't know what uh, who, who wrote this, but uh, again, it, it doesn't make any kind of logic sense to me. And then they continue, CWA plans to raise the anti-competitive impacts of Sony increasing monopoly and monopsony power. What is this monopsony? I don't understand this word. Uh, with the appropriate antitrust regulators, who can, can do that, policymakers, who are these policymakers? And stakeholders. Uh, again, uh, who are the stakeholders? The stakeholders, uh, again, uh, people tend to, uh, this is a phrase coming out very uh, from some from some years now which uh, now companies have to take um take the interest of stakeholders which don't have any direct impact on how the company is run by or don't have any direct impact of any kind of um financial incentives uh, uh, coming for example how the shareholders usually are they invest uh, they invest in the company they expect their return on, on that investment on the annual basis and that's why companies have to uh, fiduciary duties to shareholders. Uh, but now uh, the policymakers per se, they are trying to make it that uh, companies themselves have to have fiduciary responsibility also to stakeholders, which don't uh, interact directly on that. Um, usually people define stakeholders uh, like the communities around those companies or can be impacted by those companies. Again, it's very um, broad term thing here. I don't understand the, the, what this has to do with communications workers of America, has to do with stakeholders and policymakers. Again, antitrust regulators, I understand, but I, I think they didn't see, uh, they didn't say anything uh, because uh, on the previous uh, actions with Microsoft in the acquisition of Activision Blizzard, because they signed a label neutrality agreement with them, uh, and even even at the time they favorably hailed the company's acquisition of Activision Blizzard, which by itself, uh, Microsoft being a behemoth of on the tech space and gaming space, because they own Xbox, which is direct competitor of PlayStation. Uh, and the fact that they uh, made a death acquisition of $70 billion, or estimated at $70 billion, uh, which includes the Activision uh, IPs from Call of Duties, the Blizzard stuff uh, from World of Warcraft, and the King uh, IPs also, which is mobile games, uh, which this kind of uh, acquisition was at the time um, uh, trying to, at the first time, trying to being gatekeepered with the antitrust regulators they were worried about the fact that this will indeed increasing uh, monopoly uh, monopoly leverage against competition in this case was sony um and i don't know these guys come came out uh and, and tried to make the story the other way around uh, and of course we know that the fact after the acquisition activision please they already shut down four studios uh from tango game works uh, um, uh, the Austin from the makers of Prey. I always forget the name of the the studio chain there. Uh, oh my God, uh, they were from Austin. Uh, they 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 work also on. Oh my God, my memory is completely fucked up. I'm getting old. Um, but yeah, they they, they shut down four studios uh, and a lot of layoffs after this. Uh, I think this only this year, uh, 11, uh, 1100 people were fired, if not mistaken, or no, 11,000 people, sorry, not 1,100. Uh, yeah, I, I really don't understand uh, this, th these people coming out and, and, and complaining uh, of Sony shutting down studios, so not 
putting out games or doing any kind of acquisition is basically furthering gaming monopoly. With layoffs, uh, I really don't understand because these layoffs, uh, the competition could take care and and hire those people that were laid off to work and make more games or f make more studios to uh, gobble up, try to gobble up the competition. Again, I don't understand this. Uh, uh, a lot of people in the space are, are completely, um, lack of a better term, a little bit retarded or think that people are stupid when they make these kind of claims and make these kind of statements. Um, again, um, I don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you here. And then lastly, we got here a little bit more Dragon Age, the Velgard. I don't know, shilling. Um, again, Dragon Age the Velgard launched only a few hours ago, so this was a few hours after the, the launching game yesterday, if not mistaken. Uh, and then they referenced, but in this short time frame, the game has already managed to break some Steam records. Again, this is a, a very broad statement uh, in this first paragraph. Uh, it reached uh, seven, uh, 70k players, and after that it dipped down already. I think at this moment of recording, it's ramping a little bit more, but not even close to the 70k, at least at the time of recording. Um, again, but then afterwards, they, they do this brilliant first uh, praising uh, paragraph. It comes the buts and the, the howevers. However, uh, EA, uh, for the several years now, everybody knows that EA did not release its games on Steam. Uh, to favor its own store and app uh, again um Anthem afterwards was but it was they launched on steam trying to i don't know try to recoup any kind of uh, losses that they made by not um by not launching uh on, on steam at the time uh but then we still have a little bit uh down here still even with those caveats which they go about here a couple of them Dragon Age uh, also became the single player game with the highest concurrent player peak. Yeah, again, the, 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 the caveat here is published by Electronic Arts, which still is not true because there is another little caveat here, um, which is The Sims 4, which is published by Electronic Arts. It's a single player title, again, as uh, Dragon Age, and it peaked at 96k. Uh, uh, but it's the caveat is a free to play game. It doesn't matter when you start making uh, breaking Steam records with only 70k players. Um, again, uh, it, it's a chill article here, uh, very misleading if you just read the first uh, the first paragraph, uh, which unfortunately people don't pay attention and um, go for. Uh, the headline here breaks records for a Bioware. Uh, Steam records for a Bioware in EA single player game. Again, even with the caveat that Bioware did not publish not, uh, anything from 2021, which was Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which is older games, the original trilogy there. Uh, again, um, that that's why people don't trust in what we call gaming journalism because of these misleading things. Uh, and yesterday we got, uh, I, I commented even on, on X, uh, the, the Grumps thing with the leaked stuff there, again, uh, with the with the, um, return to form quote that we see all over the place in, in the reviews, praising highly praising the Bioware return to form in terms of uh, gaming. Uh, plus we got all the dialogue, this is a shit show. Uh, again, I, I think it's very, uh, everybody noticed that this, this game is, uh, it's not made for... Uh, especially Dragon Age fans. Uh, I think I played the, the, the original one a couple of hours. Uh, at the time, uh, I was not interested that much. At the time, I don't remember the why, but I remember playing, I think it was the original one, Drag Dragon Age. I played like a couple of hours. At the time, I think I was not that invested on isometric uh, games. It was a taste acquired later on in, in my gaming um, thing, uh, gaming career, let's say. Um, but yeah, um, I, I think it's not made for Dragon Age fans because it's not a, a dark fantasy game by any stretch of imagination from the reviews that I've been seeing, uh, the, the more comprehensive reviews. Again, in terms of even dialogue choices, you don't have any kind of 
dark choices to make. It's all very, uh, seems very um, cartoonish or Disneyfied, as I uh, see reference a lot in terms of the choices that you can make. So there is not a lot of negative things. Uh, I think there is not blood magic. There is something that, again, usually in the dark fantasy on the the darker side of things, the blood magic stuff usually goes there. Uh, as this kind of uh, magic stuff, uh, blood magic, you got necromancers, but it's similarly, it does only animate skeletons or something like that, at least from what I saw so far. Again, it, it's not a dark fantasy game uh, and it's not even an RPG uh, because you limit the choice of characters. So there is no role to play except for the roles that developers want you to play. So it's not an RPG per se. You might, I think you can need to classify this as a, maybe a, an action or an adventure game. So it's another RPG because you are, there is no range of choices to make there. Plus the dialogue is at minimum bland and uh, in the worst case scenario um, politically active in in, in preaching uh, preachy uh, um, I, I, I don't know it, it's it's a t it seems like a terrible game I, I don't think this is going to sell well enough for them to even recoup the money even though again uh, don't forget that this game is available or geforce now for free it's like the X xbox pass game kind of a thing there uh, i think they're trying to uh, uh, inflate the numbers in that sense uh, by doing that the same way that uh, unknown 9 trying to inflate their numbers uh, at least on steam with the bundle that was from some amd cpus or, or gpus at the time that they were sold, those bundles, it was sold, uh, uh, those bundles were were offering a no nine and uh, the, um, for uh, Warhammer 40k uh, Space Marine 2, I think that it's called. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is going to be a shit show for them and EA is going to, uh, at least my perception, by the end of the year that they're going to start putting this game uh, on sale for sure to try and see they, if they can recoup a little bit of the money they are going to lose. Um, yeah, it, it, a lot of stuff happening around this game. Uh, most of it, it, it's a lot of uh, shouting from both sides of the, the fence there. But uh, again, I don't think this game is for, uh, especially for any kind of Dragon Age uh, fans there. Um, yeah, I, I think it's not a recommendation in that sense, but it is what it is. Uh, again, a lot of games are going to come out still in this kind of state, um, trying to uh, patronize and, 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 and preach about the ideas of the creative directors of the, the, the games themselves. Uh, again, trying to, I don't know, um, I think sometimes they think that they are making game instead of writing a book um, or an autobiography. I think you can equate this as an autobiography in a certain sense of the creatives and, and the game directors there on these on this studios. But uh, yeah, uh, some interesting news here of upcoming games. Uh, I got this weird game, Showa American Story. It's going to launch next year. It launched a five-minute trailer again. This is a, a Japanese game. It's kind of a mix blend of post-apocalyptic romance RPG. Again, I, it's very weird, the, the trailer itself. You got this uh, little chick here that's uh, going around uh, like uh, Neo-Americana kind of a thing with a lot of Japanese influences on, on, on where you go. Uh, she has a caravan and uh, an RV caravan, I think, or something like that. And you got a bike there. You go around, you fight the uh, zombies and the such. This is a boss here, which is the supposedly the new boss that they're announcing. Got this monster design here that's very weird here. I don't know what the, this uh, this is all about. It's the first time I see this game here. It seems interesting and weird. Uh, hopefully it's a good game. Uh, I will try to keep my eyes on this game, see if it uh, piques my interest or not. But yeah, it seems like a very weird game. S uh, give me the feelings of uh, Dead Rising or something, the, the Dead Rising games in in certain extent that they are very weird in, in that uh, in that way. 
um, at least the original ones. But yeah, uh, I will see if something up if something else comes up um, in upcoming months uh, until the release of the game. There, uh, we got the new trailer also for Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines 2, a betting man again. Um, yeah, I'm losing a lot of faith on this game now. Uh, it's been in development hell per se for a long time now. Uh, I like some uh, deep dives that they did on the systems and the choices stuff seemed pretty interesting. I never played the, the Bloodlines, uh, the, 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 so the prequel of this one. Uh, but yeah, even on the on this trailer, I think this, uh, the character stuff is a little bit chunky in the animations. Um, yeah, uh, I'm losing a little bit of interest in, in, in this game because I'm not liking that much what I'm seeing here. Hopefully it's just this trailer. I really was interested in that choice thing that you got uh, for, from the RPG mechanics around this game. Hopefully it is a good game, but um, yeah, uh, we'll have to wait and see for reviews. Uh, at least that's... or else we get more... Um, gameplay trailers or like game uh, gameplay deep dives on specific stuff that they want to show uh, or else I, I don't think this game is going to do very well because it, it, it's been uh, a lot of delays um, and, and, and it's been I think they changed a couple of uh, studios uh, since the, they start developing the game so it might be a little bit of a mix back here but uh, yeah uh, we'll have to wait and see when the game launches. And then we got some this one, a VED. It's going to launch in 14 days, so uh, November 14. Seems an interesting one, kind of uh, story-driven RPG. It's got turn-based combat and some roguelike elements. Uh, and the trailer uh, gives uh, a, a very uh, interesting vibe in terms of the art style that they're going with. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, there is also a demo out, uh, so you can try out. I'll, if I have time, I will try and check this game, see what this is about, and maybe give it a thumbs up of thumbs downs of uh, of what I played there. Um, yeah, it's got uh, it, it's like sorcery, got some story there. Again, I didn't. Uh, I just what it catch me here. It, it was the art style that they went through. It's very similar of the poster here, at least on the trailer. It shows like this, so. Um, yeah, I think you got some um, choices here on, on the story side of things, so that's why in the RPG. Uh, but yeah, um, very interesting. Uh, I, I will probably leave uh, this uh, uh, the Steam store page uh, on both the VED and this one, so you can check out and see if it is in your interest to uh, wish list them and keep your eyes on it. But yeah, basically this is what I got in terms of news, a little bit uh, scattered all over the place, but yeah. Uh, we got on Steam, we got still Batman Ark Collection, so the trilogy here and uh, uh, the Arkham Knight Season Pass is included on this trilogy, and again the first two games are the, the Gotti edition, so he's got all the extra things. Uh, we got also Resident Evil franchise is on sale. I will leave all the Resident Evil games that are on Steam there so you can pick and choose to complete your collection. Uh, we got also The Witcher uh, Free Wild Hunt. Again, excellent game. It's one of those, hopefully, uh, it, uh, it will not be... It's one of those franchises that I think is going to be ruined in the upcoming games that are going to be launched. Uh, but yeah, Complete Edition is the way to go, in my opinion, uh, especially for the mod stuff. Uh, usually you need to have the, the two expansions there. But yeah, it can be even uh, further improved with uh, a lot of visual mods and gameplay mods and mission mods that they are there. Um, yeah, it, it's one of those that I, I really recommend. I already played the game and finished up around three or four times since it launched. So it's one of those that I, I, I really do recommend. Uh, got also No Man's Sky, 60% off. Again, uh, Huge amounts of content. Uh, it, it's uh, I, I can almost guarantee that it's better than Starfield. Uh, then you got also Atomic Heart, 60% uh, off or around that, depending on the edition there. And you got a demo to try out uh, if it is something that you would like to buy. Uh, we got also Pacific Drive. It's one of those that I really, really want to, to check it out for myself one of these days. Uh, again, uh, I just need time uh, to uh, to play this game. Then we got also Liza P, one of those that I 
need and want to try out it's 40 percent off and then lastly on steam uh, this one is, is juice on a very interesting game very positive reviews all around and it's 40 percent off uh one it's kind of a um, the, the story is uh, told by uh, the visuals itself. It, it seems pretty interesting, the, the mechanics there on the climbing mechanics and the exploration. Uh, but yeah, it it's, uh, gives me vibes of Eco. If you ever play that game in PlayStation 2, that's when I play that game, Eco. Very, it gives me that those vibes there. Um, then we got on GOG, you got Days Gone. 75% off again uh, on PlayStation. If it is on GOG, you don't need any kind of shenanigans on the PlayStation network, uh, login stuff there. And basically, uh, as always, GOG, you just buy the game, download the files, install the game, that's it. Uh, you just play and forget um, that there is no uh, online uh, shenanigans happening there. And then lastly, we got Deus Ex Human Revolution. This is the director's cut, 85% off, must play if you like these kind of games. And then the sequel, Deus Ex Mankind Divided. This is the digital deluxe edition as the, all the extra goodies there. It's also 80% off. And yeah, basically this is it for today. Sorry if I went a little bit all over the place today, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, some people I don't understand. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it, <laughs> to a certain extent, it's how life works. You got a lot of uh, different stuff happening at the same time. Uh, I'm going to just wrap up here with the plug of my Patreon as usual for extra support. Um, this extra support at this moment in time is for me to focus on trying to get a better storage solution uh, so I can get backups of backups of the stuff that I do for my clients and of course extra space for the videos that I do for the channel. And with all that said, hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you in the next one. So until then, let me master out.